Hello, students. Today we are discussing about the protection and privilege levels in a microprocessor subject. This one is the part one. In which the privilege levels and the stacks. The level stack level, the PL is equal to CPL is always when changing the CPL, the processor automatically changes the stacks. When we want to change the CPL, the, by changing the CPL, the processor automatically changes the stack. How? By using the task state segment. So a processor changes the stack by using a CPL and a task state segment that is a TSS. The base of the TSS is stored in a task register which is updated by the privilege instructions LTR. The TSS associates a stack for each code for each of the privilege levels 0, 1 and 2. The privilege instruction HLT, that is a hold instructions. It holds, stops the executions, the instruction execution, and places the 0386 in a hold state. Whenever the hold instruction executes, it will stop the execution of all the instruction and places the 0386 in a hold state by enabling interrupts or a NMI or a reset. It will resume the execution. So, if we want to resume the execution of the instructions, we have to use the enabling the interrupt instructions. NMI, that is non maskable interrupts or a reset, will resume the execution if an interrupt is used to resume the execution after the HLT. The saved CSIP values points to the instruction following the HLT. The flags affected or none of the flags are affected by using this instruction. CLTS clear task switch flag in a CR0 operations. The operations TS flag in a CR0 is less than zero. A CLTS clears the task switch that is a TS flag in a register CR0. This flag is set by the 0386 every time. A task switch occurs. The TS flag is used to manage a processor extension as follows. Every execution of an ESI instruction is trapped if the TS flag is set. Execution of a wet instruction is trapped if the MP flag and a TS flags are both set. Thus, if a task switch was made after an ESC instruction was begin. The processor extension context may need to be saved before a new escape instruction can be issued. The fault handler saves the context and reset the TS flags. Flags affected. None of the flags are affected except a TS flag. LGDT or a LIDT, load global or interrupt descriptor table. LGDT global descriptor table or a LIDT local interrupt descriptor table instructions loads a linear base addresses and limit value from the six byte data operand in a memory into the GDTR or a IDTR respectively. If a 16 bit operand is used with the LGDT or LIDT, the register is loaded with a 16-bit limit and a 24-bit base and a high order 8 bits of the 6-byte data operands are not used. If a 32-bit operand is used, a 16-bit limit and a 32-bit base is loaded. The high order 8 bits of the 6-byte operands are used as a high order base address bytes. None of the flags are affected by using these instructions. LLDT, that is a load local descriptor table registers. LLDT loads the local descriptor table registers. The word operand to the LLDT should contains a selector to the global descriptor table that is a GDT. The GDT entry should be local descriptor table. If so, then the LDTR is loaded from the entry. The descriptor register DS, ES, SS, FS, GS and CS are not affected. The LDT field in the task 
state segment does not change the selector operand can be zero if so the ldtr is marked invalid all the descriptor references cause a gp fault none of the flags are affected by using this instruction ldtr load task registers uh, ldtr loads the task registers from the source register or a memory location specified by the operand the loaded state segment is marked busy the task switch does not occur the ltr is used only in operating system software it is not used in application programs none of the flags are affected by using the ltr instructions lmsw load machine status word lmsw instructions loads the machine status words from the source operand these instructions can be used to switch to protected mode so it has must be followed by an intra segment jump to flush the instruction queue so these instructions are used to switch to the protected mode lmsw will not switch back to the real address modes once it is switched to the real uh, jump to protected mode lmsw instruction does not switch back to the real address mode none of the flags are affected with using the lmsw instructions the move instructions the above, above forms of the move instructions are store or load the control registers cr0 cr2 and cr3 into or from a general register that means these move instructions can load the control register into the general purpose register or from a gps register it can extract the control registers contents of the control registers a 32 bit operands are always used with these instructions regardless of the operand size and uh, attribute the flags affected are the following flags are affected overflow flag sign flag zero flag auxiliary carry flag priority flag and a uh, carry flags are affected the above move forms of the move instruction stores or load control registers that is it loads the debug register dr0 dr1 dr2 dr3 dr6 up to the dr7 into the gps that is the general purpose register or from the gps that means move these move instructions will store the debug register from d0 to d7 into the gps that is the general purpose register or from gps to the it will uh, extract the content of these registers a 32 bit operands are always used with these instructions regardless of the operand size attributes following flags are affected auxiliary carry flags sign flag zero flags overflow flags priority flags and uh, carry flags are affected by using these instructions so now <coughs> the above form of the move instruction stores or load the control registers test registers that is a tr6 and a tr7 okay these move instructions will load the test register into the gps or from the gps that means it will store the test register into the gps or it will extract the these registers from the gps a 32 bit operands are always used with these instructions regardless of the operand size attributes the flags affected following flags are affected by using these instructions overflow flags sign flag zero flags auxiliary pair priority flags and a uh, carry flags are affected by using these instructions iopl which is the sensitive instructions if a cpl is less than equal to iopl in that case these instructions will be executed these instructions what are the instructions executed under these conditions so following are the instructions which are executed under this condition that is a cli clear interrupt flags sti set interrupt flags in input from the port ins insb insw insd input from the port to the strings out 
output to the port out s out sb out sw out sd output string to the port cli that is a clear interrupt flags cli instruction clears the interrupt flags if the current privilege level is at least as a privilege as a iopn so cli instructions clear the interrupt flag when when the privilege levels is equals to the privilege level as a iopl no other flags are affected by using these instruction external interrupts are not recognized at the end of the cli instruction because the instructions from the point on until the interrupt flag is set uh, interrupt flags these cli instructions affects none of the flag except a if that is a interrupt flags sti said interrupt flags the sti instruction says the interrupt flags to the one the adjure 386 then responds to the external interrupts after executing the next instruction if the next instruction allows the interrupt flags to remain enabled if the external interrupts are disabled and you code the sti ret and a written instructions allows to execute before external interrupts are recognized also if the external interrupts are disabled and you code the sti cli then the external interrupts are not recognized because the cli instruction clears the interrupt flag during its execution the none of the flags are affected except the interrupt flags interrupt flag is set as as one when the executing the sti instructions in that is a input from the port in instructions transfers a data byte or a word data word from the port numbered by the second operand into the registers al ax or a ex specified by the first operand to access any port from 0 to 65535 by placing the port number in a dx register and by using an in instructions with a dx register as a second operand the io instructions can be shortened by using an 8 bit port io in the instructions the upper 8 bits of the port addresses will be zero when 8 bit port io is used none of the flags are affected by using these instructions so the next instructions are a uh, ins insb insw insd input from the port to the strings ins transfers data from the input port numbered by the dx register to the memory byte or a word at a es destination index the memory operand must be addressable from the es no segment override is possible the destination register is di if the address size attribute of the instruction is a 16 bit or a edi if the address size attribute is a 32 bit ins does not allow the specification of the port number as an immediate value the port must be addressed through the dx register values load the current value of into the dx before executing the ins instruction the destination address is determined by contents of the destination index register it loads the current index into the destination index register before executing the ins instructions after the transfer is made di or edi advance automatically if the direction flag is zero or a di or edi is incremented if the direction flag is one di or edi is decremented a di increments or decrements by the one if a byte is input by the two if a word is input or by the four if a double word is input insb insw insd are the synonyms of the byte word and a double word in ins instructions ins can be protected by the rep prefix for block input of a cx bytes or a word 
none of the flags are affected by using these instructions out output to the port the out instructions transfers a data byte or a word data word from the registers al ax or a eax given as a second operand to the output port numbered by the first operand output to any port from 0 to 65535 is preferred by placing the port number in the dx register and then using an out instruction with a dx as the first operand if the instructions contains an 8 bit port id that value is zero extended to the 16 bit none of the flags are affected out s out sb out sw out sd output strings to the port the out s transfers data from the memory byte word or a double word at the source index register to the output port address by the dx register if the address size attribute for this instruction is a 16 bit si is used for the source index register otherwise the address size attribute is a 32 bit the esi is used for the source index register out s does not allows specifications of the port number as an immediate value the port must be addressed through the dx register values load the correct value into the dx before executing the out s instructions the address of the source data is determined by contents of the source index register load the correct index value into the asi or esi before executing the out s instructions after the transfer the source index register is advanced automatically if the direction flag is zero the source index register is incremented if the direction flag is one the source register is decremented by the one the amount of the increment or a decrement is a one if the byte is output two if the word is output and a four if the double word is output out sb out sw and out sd are the synonyms for the byte words double words out s instruction out s can proceed by the reap prefix for the block output of the cx byte of the word none of the flags are affected by using these instructions thank you friends for watching the video be with us thank you once again